Okay, I'm going to talk about inequality aversion. So, in quality aversion. And so, in talking about this, we're going to use um, the basis for our discussion as a paper from um, 1999 by Fair and Schmidt. Um, and they were trying to understand preferences and preference. Um, preferences over inequality. Um, and so the basic idea that we want to think of is we're going to have to construct a utility function for someone who might be inequality averse. And this has to capture two ideas. The first idea is that I dislike it when other people have more than I do. That's what we call disadvantageous inequality. But then the second thing is that I also dislike an advantageous inequality. That is, I dislike instances, instances in which I have significantly more than other people do. However, when comparing these two different things, disadvantageous versus advantageous inequality, um, disadvantageous inequality is worse for me in my utility function than advantageous inequality is. So let's think about how we're going to capture this. Let's say, imagine someone, an agent, and they have a utility function, ui, and that is based on the payoffs that they receive and that another person, J, receives. Okay, so then here are the two things that we're going to want to think about. Firstly, we're going to say that this is composed of um, three elements. The first one is pi i. So that is the payoff that I receive in a given interaction. Pi i, say, some amount of money um, that I receive in an interaction. Um, However, we're going to subtract two different terms from this. The first term is going to be minus alpha um, times max pi j minus pi i zero, and then also minus delta times max pi i minus pi j zero. Now the important thing here is to remember what the max operator does. What does the max operator do? Basically it has two arguments here. Um, in this case it has pi j minus pi i and zero. The max operator will then choose the maximum number of these two operators, either pi j minus pi i or zero. So let's consider the following situation. Imagine it's the case that um, there's a split of money um, and say pi j is 15, pi a, pi i is 5, so 15 minus 5 is 10, and then what will we see? We'd have 10 and 0. What is the maximum of those two numbers? 10. Okay, so um, 15, 5, and 0, what do we see there? 15 minus 5 is 10, 10 versus 0. When we're comparing those two, the maximum number is 10. So the maximum selects the maximum number of its arguments. Okay, so that's an important thing that we want to think about here, because the maximum is selecting the maximum of the arguments in that operator. Now, that's going to help us understand which of these is going to be telling us about advantageous versus disadvantageous inequality. So let's have a look here. If I'm comparing pi j minus pi i, so my payoff is pi i, someone else's payoff is pi j, so your payoff is pi j. So pi j minus pi i, your payoff minus my payoff, as we said in a second ago, 15 minus 5, that difference is 10. You have $10 more than I do. So this first term over here is measuring disadvantageous inequality. So this term over here, disadvantageous inequality. Now the third term that we have over here, delta max pi i minus pi j, what is that telling us? Pi i minus pi j, my payoff minus your payoff. If I have more than you do here, then I get pi a, you get pi j, Let's say, for example, I got $12 and you got $8.
that means that difference is four dollars, then I experience some decrease in my utility as a consequence of having more than you do. So in that context over here, this third term is advantageous inequality. Now notice what is happening here with the um, alpha and the delta. So we want to think, how does this work? Well, firstly, the first term, pi i, I know that I like getting more money. I like having higher payoffs, for example. But then what we see is there's a difference between where um, if you have more than I do, okay, so if you have more than I do, then pi j is greater than pi i, therefore this is a positive term, okay? Positive term versus zero, what do we do? It selects this maximum number up here. So for example, like we said a moment ago, imagine you had 15 and I had 5, 10 versus zero. Then what would happen? It's going to select 10 here. So we're going to have an example there of 10. And so what would happen in that circumstance? We look at this, we get pi i minus alpha times 10. And then we think, okay, is this third term happening? So minus delta, max of pi i minus pi j. Okay, so remember we said a second ago, you had 15, I had 5. So 5 minus 15, that's minus 10, and 0. What's the maximum of those? 0 is. So minus 10 versus 0, 0 is the maximum of those two numbers. So this third term, when you have more money than I do, it drops out. There is no advantageous inequality there. There is only disadvantageous um, inequality. You have more than I do. So what I want to think of then is I have some positive payoff, the five dollars that I received, but from those five dollars I'm subtracting alpha times ten. You know, alpha we have to think about parameterizing. We haven't yet said what the size of alpha and delta is. In general we assume that alpha is an element of um, 0, 1. So it's between 0 and 1, or 0 is less than or equal to alpha is less than or equal to 1. Okay, what do we also say? We also say that delta is less than alpha, typically. So that is, um, I dislike disadvantageous inequality more than I dislike advantageous inequality. Advantageous inequality doesn't feel quite as subjectively bad to me as disadvantageous inequality does. When we put all of these together, what can we say? Imagine it were the case that alpha was, say, 0.2, right? And you had a payoff of 15, I had a payoff of 5. If we substituted the numbers in here, what would we see? We'd see 5, we'd see alpha equal to 0.2, and we'd see 5 minus 0.2 times 10. 5 minus 0 0.2 times 10 tells me that my utility in that circumstance is going to equal 3. We're seeing there what happens is my utility is lower now than it would have been if I had not cared about disadvantageous inequality. Now let's imagine that instead um, uh, that alpha were higher. Imagine alpha were in that circumstance, um, say, um, 0.8. What would we have seen then? We'd have seen three, um, 5, my payoff, minus 0.8 times 10. That's 8. So even though I'm seeing um, a positive amount of money that I'm receiving, 5 minus 8 is then giving me a net payoff of minus 3, a net utility of minus 3, sorry, and so my utility of being so much worse off than you are is in fact negative, even though I'd received a positive amount of money. Now this is going to be re really, really important later when we want to understand why people try or might reject offers in the ultimatum game. So remember the ultimatum game from another video? We saw that people sometimes reject offers of positive amounts of money that other people offer them. That might come down to how we think about what their alpha and delta would be. Alpha measuring their attitudes towards disadvantageous inequality, delta measuring their attitudes towards advantageous inequality.